Come in. Hi, I'm Senya from the Respiratory Department. I'm here to take an AUG. Could you just please confirm your first and last name and your date of birth? Okay, I'm just making sure I check the armband, make sure that's all correct. Today I'm going to be doing an AUG and I'm making sure the doctor put in an order on the patient's chart and the patient doesn't have any allergies or anything that can contraindicate me taking an AUG. And while I'm doing this, I will be sanitizing my hands for 15 seconds putting on gloves, and the reason for this procedure would be to get the patient's oxygenation and ventilatory status and determining the acid base balance. And the equipment I would need is gloves, I've got my ABG kit with the syringe, the gauze, the alcohol wipes, the band-aid, I need the patient and a sharps container. I'm making sure my needle doesn't have any excess heparin because that would make the blood gas more acidic. Two um, non-invasive treatments for this could be putting a pulse ox on the patient or giving a capnometer, but for this patient we need a more bacteria-like blood gas, so I'm going to be doing ABG. Certain risks and precautions for this sampling could be getting emboli, hematoma, could be bleeding, and or an infection. Just to make sure the patient, if the patient's oxygenation or ventilatory status has changed, you have to wait 30 minutes prior before taking an ABG because that could contraindicate the sample. Okay. I'm going to be opening this my biohazard bag to put the syringe in afterwards and take it to the lab. Making sure I have my syringe ready with the bevel up. And it's at the sample size that I need. For today, I'll just be getting a 0.5 sample. If there were other tests that need to be performed on the patient, then I'd be getting a larger sample. Making sure I have a patient identifier with the name, the date, the time, and the temperature of the patient. My gauze, my alcohol, Band-Aid and my stopper. And before I perform this test, I'll be doing the modified Allen's test and making sure the patient's got good collateral circulation. You can just squeeze your fist three times and then hold. And then let go. Okay, so their owner already their hand pinked up in less than 10 seconds. So they have a positive result, so we can use the radial site. So before I start, I make sure the patient is stable enough for this procedure. They're not hyperventilating or panicking. If so, I would just calm them down. Getting an alcohol wipe to just to prep the site that we'll be using, just the radial site. Cleaning it. Disposing of that. And then, again, making sure my bevel is up. Needle. Position the patient so their arm is stabilized and I can get a good puncture site. And then feel for the patient's pulse. Okay. And I'm going to insert the needle at a 45 degree angle. Okay. And once I see that flash of blood, gonna fill up the sample size and as soon as I have enough of a sample I'm gonna slowly pull out the needle and put it on the gauze. I'm gonna cap the needle with my safety device. I'm gonna hit it a couple times to take out the excess oxygen bubbles. I'm gonna dispose of the needle in the sharps container and insert it into my stopper and let out the excess oxygen. And then I would just hold the gauze until the patient's bleeding stops. Okay, and then I would just put a Band-Aid on. Okay, I'm just gonna label the patient's syringe to make sure that the needle doesn't get lost anywhere. And if this procedure were to take longer than 10 to 15 minutes, I would need to get a bag of ice just so the blood would stop metabolizing. And then all of this would get thrown away. 
the needle would be placed in the biohazard bag and taken to the lab. All of this would also get disposed of. I would put everything in the chart, decontaminate my hands, throwing away my gloves and putting hand sanitizer on. Okay. This will get taken to the lab. I am Fenya, back from respiratory. I'm here with the results. The patient's results were pH was 7.4. The CO2 was 40 and their bicarb was 24. So the patient's doing well, the results are normal, and after this I would just let the nurse or doctor know that the patient is doing better, their APG results are normal, and that's how you do an APG.